In this presentation, we will study signum function. Signum function is represented by S, G and T. Signum function is also known as sine function. Signum function is also known as sine function. And we got this word signum from sine. Signum stands for sine in Latin. Signum stands for sine in Latin. Now why we call this function sine function? What is the reason for calling it sine function? We call it sine function because it tells us sine of real numbers. I will first draw the number line. Let's say this is 0. When t is negative, this means when t is less than 0, the sine of numbers will be negative and the signum function is equal to minus 1 when t is less than 0 representing the sine of numbers when t is equal to 0 there is no sine so signum function is simply equal to 0 when t is equal to 0 when t is greater than 0 this means numbers will have positive sign the signum function is equal to 1 representing the sine of numbers now we will draw the waveform of signum function using this definition when t is negative signum function is equal to minus 1 when t is negative signum function is equal to minus 1 when t is equal to 0 signum function is also equal to 0 and when t is positive signum function is equal to 1 when t is positive signum function is equal to 1 so this is the complete plot of signum function and you can see at t equal to 0 the plot is discontinuous the plot of signum function at t equal to 0 is discontinuous the signum function at t equal to 0 is discontinuous and because of this reason we cannot differentiate signum function at t equal to 0 therefore we cannot differentiate signum function at t equal to 0 now we will see few examples based on signum function in the first example we have signum minus 3 and it is equal to minus 1 because signum function tells the sign of the number the sign is negative so signum minus 3 is simply equal to minus 1 if we have signum 7 then it is equal to 1 if we have signum 0 it is equal to 0 and there is one homework problem for you in this homework problem we have signum pi minus 3 and you need to tell me whether signum pi minus 3 is equal to minus 1 0 or 1 once you have your answer post it in comment section now we will discuss various properties of signum function in the first property in the first property we will find out relation between signum function and unit step function we will find out relation between signum function and unit step function signum function signum function is equal to minus 1 when t is less than 0 and it is equal to 1 when t is greater than 0 I am not considering the signum function at t equal to 0 because we cannot differentiate signum function at t equal to 0 and we have to differentiate the result obtained in property number 1 now I will add 1 to the signum function so we have minus 1 plus 1 and 1 plus 1 so at t less than 0 we have 0 minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 0 and at t greater than 0 we have 2 and we know the definition of unit step signal ut it is equal to 0 when t is less than 0 and it is equal to 1 when t is greater than 0 if we multiply unit step signal by 2 we have 0 when t is less than 0 and we have 2 when t is greater than 0 which is same as this result so we can write 1 plus signum function is equal to twice of unit step function I will write this relation again 1 plus signum function is equal to twice of unit step function so this is the relation between signum function 
and unit step function. Now we will find out relation between signum function and unit impulse function. In the second property, we will find out relation between signum function and unit impulse function. For this, I will differentiate this result. On differentiating, we have zero. Differentiation of one is zero. Then we have differentiation of signum function with respect to t equal to twice of dut by dt. And if you remember the last presentation, we proved differentiation of unit step function is equal to unit impulse function. So we have we have differentiation of signum function equal to twice of unit impulse function. So this is the relation between signum function and unit impulse function. In the third property, I will explain one more way to write the signum function. When signum function is having the argument equal to t, then we can write it as mod t by t when t is not equal to zero and it is equal to zero when t is equal to zero. You can cross check this. Let's take t equal t equal to minus three. So signum minus three is equal to mod of minus three divided by minus three, which is equal to three by minus three, which is equal to minus one. And the result is true because you can see the sign of number is negative. Let's take one more example. When t is equal to seven, signum seven is equal to mod seven by seven, which is equal to one. And the result is true because sign here is positive. So we can represent signum function like this also. Mod t by t is not valid when t is equal to zero because when t is equal to zero, we have mod zero by zero, which is equal to zero by zero. According to this zero, we have zero. And according to this zero, we have infinity. So the result is not defined when t is equal to zero if you use mod t by t. So we have mentioned when t is equal to zero, signum function is simply equal to zero. So you can use this definition or you can simply use this definition. Both will produce the same result. Now we will discuss the last property, the property number four. In the fourth property, if you differentiate mod t with respect to t, it will be equal to signum t. And this is true only when t is not equal to zero. So this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. There is one homework problem in this lecture. You need to find out signum pi minus three. Once you have your answer, post it in comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.